What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash am I the butthole? <laughs> and if you'd like to skip that initial waffle, throat was a bit dry there. Timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And if you really want to be extra spicy, you can join the channel by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link tree in the description for Patreon and joining up there. Just like Matthew Burton did yesterday, thank you so much for your support and for Fred Gomez for rejoining the channel as well. It means the absolute world to me. And for everyone for spending 20 minutes of your precious time with me. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. And let's crack on with today's stories. God damn it, Mark. Now, our first story comes from a throwaway account. Am I the asshole for telling my surrogate to stop acting like she was my husband's wife? My husband and I have been together for five years. We wanted kids, but because of my health problems, this wasn't possible. We decided to go with surrogacy. My friend nominated their sister, Brittany, 29. I agreed right away because I know Brittany and the family. We set everything up, discussed payment, short and long-term plans, counseling and doctor's appointments. We've explored IVF and chose a private clinic to get it done. It started after Brittany took a pregnancy test. She only told my husband though, she had both of our numbers. She only sent my husband a pic of the test while he was at work and sent me nothing when I gave him my personal contact info, but it was okay. Things got complicated when Brittany started having access to our credit cards for her own wants and claimed they were the baby's needs. She excluded me from doctor's visits and scans and had only my husband go with her. Her excuse was my husband drives and has time since I work and was unavailable most of the time. I felt isolated from this experience, but said nothing knowing she's bearing a lot of burden, so I had patience. My husband had no idea what was going on and if it, this was normal. This was new to us, so we didn't know. She's seven months in and last week she visited us to discuss things that I thought we'd previously agreed on, but she said she changed her mind about and her mum was there too. I heard Brittany out and was shocked when she gave us a list of how things should be from now on, since she said there was a lot of confusion in the past because of me stressing out by complaining. She requested she gets to say in things like baby name after I deleted the list of names she sent to my husband. She wanted more access to my husband's credit card slash free time to get stuff done at her place. Also more time with the baby then agreed on. Then wrapped up by saying, only my husband should be with her in the delivery room and use the hospital as an excuse. I got up and firmly stated I don't agree on her new terms and that she should stop acting like she was my husband's wife and this was their baby. My husband didn't speak till she started crying. He asked me to sit down but I said I had boundaries, reminded her what her role was and how she overstepped. Her mum went off and said her daughter was being mistreated when she put herself mentally and physically through the most selfless act for us to make us a family. She gave up part of her life in those months to give us what we want and I was acting selfish and ungrateful. She had us leave and told my friend and it got more complicated. I apologize for what I said. Am I the asshole? And there's an edit which gives additional information. So edit says, yes, we agreed on paying for the surrogacy, like I stated above, no favors or anything. Edit two, no, we did not have a legal contract because my friend said there was no need for us to do that and basically talked us out of it since we are considered family, but we had an agreement including paying her. Edit, question about whether Brittany had kids of her own. She was a single mum of a four-year-old who passed away from an accident. She had him at a young age, but she always seemed in good mental and physical health. I didn't know too much about like IVF and, and, and stuff like that, but wouldn't you thought that the clinic would insist on that you have some sort of contract in place, some sort of paperwork in place, which I know sounds horrible, but surely it's the logical thing to do in this situation that stops that because now there's no legal contract of any sort, this could turn into a huge legal battle really because you have nothing to say. It's just your word against theirs. Unless the clinic does step in. I, I don't quite understand that part of it. So I'm hoping to get some additional info from that in the comments really. And IKUGBJK says this, maybe above Reddit's pay grade, info. Is there an actual written legal contract? Because if there is, I don't see how she can really demand changing anything. If there isn't, 
Oof, 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 oof. Edit info too. Okay, so there's no legal contract. Is there at least a written contract, a voice recording of the agreement, text, emails, anything at all? Then says, lawyer up immediately, OP, I feel for you. And Widget Sim Paradise says, this is why surrogacy is so heavily regulated. Was there a contract? If not, yikes, get a lawyer ASAP. Surrogates have no business being involved in naming the baby or dictating time spent with the child. Red flags abound. You're the arsehole, but you may have put yourself in a situation where an unstable person could now have leverage to essentially be a third parent to your child. And Cassie Chu says, I don't want to sound horrible, but I would check if your husband is having an affair with her. If not physical, then at least emotional. My husband would tell me if someone who's involved with both of us was messaging him only. Also, it doesn't look like he's defending you. It's crazy that he said nothing while she made her demands and when her mum was tearing you a new one. Strange, strange, strange. And Disney Freak says not the arsehole. She wants the doting husband treatment while she's pregnant. Lawyer up and lay down the law for her. She's carrying your baby. You get to name it. As for your husband's credit cards and time, she's out of her mind. Also, isn't it usually a requirement for a surrogate that she's already carried a healthy pregnancy to term? Does she not have other kids? This is what's wrong with one, having a family friend do it, two, personal, and two, not checking their mental state beforehand. Not saying it's your fault, she's nuts. Get a lawyer and set up a meeting ASAP. Now, what do you guys make of this one? We didn't really get an answer on the whole contract lawyer thing and why the clinic hasn't insisted on that. I don't quite understand that part. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. And our next story comes from Whistleblower Am I the Arsehole? Am I the Arsehole for telling my father-in-law what his wife has been saying about him on the internet? My wife's mum and stepdad SD separated about 18 months ago. From my understanding, the cause was that SD wanted to let his two adult children move into their home after both his kids lost their jobs due to COVID and needed a place to stay. Mother-in-law was totally against this. At first, SD obeyed his wife's wishes, but he eventually heard his son was sleeping in his car after losing his apartment and told both his kids they could come. Mother-in-law was furious and would call my wife almost daily to complain about it. Mother-in-law and SD got into a big fight about it when SD told her that he wasn't going to kick his kids out and have them be homeless. Mother-in-law left. Mother-in-law has basically couch surfing ever since. She stayed with us for a few two to three week stints and has bounced around to her other siblings the rest of the time. SD's daughter moved out late last year, but his son still stays with him, trying to save money to move out. Mother-in-law refuses to go back until SD's son is gone. At this point, SD and mother-in-law are no longer talking. I'm actually pretty close with SD as he helped me with numerous home projects after my wife and I bought our first house. He feels like he's stuck between a rock and a hard place because he loves mother-in-law and wants her to come back, but he also doesn't want his son sleeping in his car again. Mother-in-law has told my wife and I that she refuses counseling because she doesn't think she's done anything wrong and she won't file for divorce because she doesn't have a job and needs SD's income and health insurance. She also feels like SD won't file for divorce either because she knows he would feel guilty about cutting her from the insurance. Over the last year, mother-in-law has been posting a lot of stuff on Facebook about SD, a lot of bad mouthing him, calling him names, saying mean things about his kids and that the only thing SD is good for is money and health insurance. SD doesn't have Facebook and doesn't know what mother-in-law has been saying about him. A few months ago, I was helping SD move an appliance and he told me how much he missed mother-in-law and wanted her to come back. I felt bad hearing how much he was hurting and told him he needed to see something. I showed him mother-in-law's Facebook feed and all the bad things she's been saying. He broke down crying, but eventually pulled himself together enough to let me help him screenshot the post and save them. A couple of weeks ago, mother-in-law called my wife in hysterics because SD had actually filed for divorce. After they got done talking, my wife talked to me about it and I came clean that I showed SD what mother-in-law has been saying about him online. My wife was irate about it and told me that it was none of my business to do that and that I shouldn't have meddled in their relationship. I told her SD deserved to know what mother-in-law had been saying about him. My wife told me I'm a huge asshole because if her mum finds out it was me who told SD, then mother-in-law will never forgive me and it will cause a huge rift in her relationship with her mum. 
Now this is going to be a straight away not the arsehole for me and the mother-in-law is the, the biggest arsehole and the daughter as well for having a go at you at the very end there. And whilst I can understand, you know, you're not wanting people to move into your home, two adult children moving in, but they were in a really difficult situation. So having absolutely no empathy for them doesn't wash with me at all. If I was in that situation, I'd want those two adults to come move back in while they got themselves together. The thing you do with that in that situation though, if you don't want it, like I said, I wouldn't want two adults to come move in with me indefinitely as you make a plan for it. You make a timeline and work towards that. Sure, it has to be a bit flexible because the job market and stuff is absolutely wild at the moment. So who knows if they're going to get a job, but you work towards something. You don't just turn around and say, no, I don't want them moving in my house. They can stay homeless and sleeping in their car. Absolutely not. That's disgusting to your partner's children. And then to go bad mouthing someone who still loves you on social media i think you deserve to be called out for it why should you get away with that so i'm gonna go with a not the arsehole in this one but all bullnut says wow not the arsehole you did the right thing i'd be worried that your wife might take after her mother a bit though yeesh why does your mother-in-law hate his kid so much op says my wife's relationship with her mother is complicated my wife moved out when she was 17 and didn't talk much her entire time in college. It wasn't until she finished college, became a young adult, that she tried to rekindle the relationship with her mother. They still aren't incredibly close. Mother-in-law thinks her stepkids are losers and leeches. She repeatedly calls them middle-aged toddlers in her posts. Whisper at Midnight says, wait, so this woman moves out of her own home and couch surfs because her stepchildren live there temporarily due to a situation out of their control. She made herself homeless. Wow, what a hypocrite. Also, mom, you put your thoughts on an online platform for people to see and comment. You didn't tell her husband about a personal conversation. You pointed him to what she is telling the world. Not the arsehole. Typing nonsense says, not the arsehole. Mother-in-law sounds like an absolute pill. Poor SD was trying to be a good father. I agree with you, SD deserves to know what's being said behind his back, especially by someone he thought cared about him. I can't imagine being in a relationship where my partner would do that to me. Your wife needs to learn to understand that mother-in-law's actions and words have consequences. You are simply a messenger and she's trying to shoot you for things mother-in-law said. Radiant Cat says, not the arsehole. Stepdad deserves to know what mother-in-law was saying about him. How did she think the relationship was going to work knowing she'd rather see his children homeless rather than help them? If your wife is okay with the way her mum has been acting, then you have bigger problems. And one more from Lee Glue who says, phew, oh boy, okay, not the arsehole. I know people will disagree, but listen, you were unfortunately right in the middle of all this. You had mother-in-law stay with you. SD had a strong relationship with you and both of them were sharing their thoughts about the whole thing with you. Sounds like SD even sought your advice slash two cents on the matter. Usually I'd say don't get involved, but they both already involved you. Additionally, mother-in-law was essentially taking SD for a ride financially while badmouthing him all over town to anyone who would listen. Mother-in-law sounds like an absolute asshole, but I digress. You absolutely did the right thing. Social media is in fact public. She shared these thoughts publicly. All you did was point him to them. Not the asshole and I feel so badly for SD. Divorcing mother-in-law will be the best thing he could do for himself. Now, what would you do if you found yourself in this situation? What would you do if your partner turned around to you and said their two adult children needed to move into your place to stay for a while? How would you feel about that? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. And our next story comes from this eye 4799 Am I the asshole for not accepting the apology of a coworker? This one is rather short. A bit of background, my team recently had a rather lengthy online meeting. During lunch break, some of us stayed online to chat a little bit. After mentioning my boyfriend, gay relationship, one of our newest co-workers had a very negative rant about homosexual relationships. Despite multiple people telling him to stop talking, he kept going until the host of the meeting returned. The co-worker was pulled out of the meeting and the next day we were informed that he was getting pulled out of our project and essentially demoted. Our manager also told me that coworker wants to apologize to me directly in front of the team, since his outburst was mostly directed towards me, also the only gay on the team. To the question, I told him and my manager not to bother with any apology since I don't believe it would be sincere in any way and pretty much only motivated to avoid more severe repercussions. 
That sparked a discussion. My manager and some co-workers told me I should just go with it and let him apologize to let him save some face. Others are saying I'm downright an ass because everyone should have the chance to redeem themselves and some co-workers agree with me that an insincere apology is worthless. And the edit said, seems pretty clear so far to me, followed by, one thing I want to add, I will not do the whole make him apologize and then reject it publicly. That just seems like extra drama to me. And in this one, I think you're totally right. You don't have to accept apology. An apology is not a fix for everything. We had a couple of stories just recently where people think, you know, because someone's apologized, they should be able to get away with it. Like it, like it just fixes everything. Like, hallelujah, the person has apologized. I let him go. Absolutely not. <laughs> the only reason this person wants to apologize is because they've been called out. And that's the only reason. Their views haven't changed in, in less than 24 hours, have they? Come on now. So it's going to be a not the arsehole for me. And we'll start with Danuli who says, not the arsehole, apologies are not magic beans you can plant to access a world where you get what you want. I seriously doubt that emotion changed the homophobic views co-worker was comfortable spouting. So the apology is, as you say, likely insincere. Glaxon Flux says, he's only apologizing to look good, not because he means it. There'd be no reason to do it in front of the team if he meant it. You never have to accept an apology you don't believe. Not the arsehole, you could always let him apologize and then tell him in front of everyone that you don't accept it. Entertainment OK says, not the arsehole, he's only doing it to save face. He still has the same ideas. I would tell the boss that the only way you're willing to accept an apology is when your co-worker has finished a mandatory course about workplace sensitivity, diversity, and inclusivity. And super fast mama says, not the arsehole, but I think the better angle to take is to tell your employer that a public apology in front of the team makes you very uncomfortable and you'd rather not go through such an awkward situation again. By no means do you need to accept an apology. And we have a couple more comments, one from Cameron JK who says, not the arsehole, he knew what he was doing and he was told by others to stop multiple times during the offense. He has no right to save face. Wine or Death says, not the arsehole. However, there might be a bit more to it than just your coworker saving face. This also could be about the manager and company making an example of that this type of behavior will not be tolerated. The company cannot broadcast what their exact punishment is, but by having a public apology, it shows to other employees that they are paying attention. Even if you disagree with their approach, it also potentially saves from the legal issues. I am not a lawyer. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Should OP just accept the apology to save face or shouldn't they have to? Should they just let the person stew on it? I personally don't think that they've changed their opinion that quickly, but maybe they have. Who knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and your verdicts on all of today's stories if you choose to share them. Never any pressure to either. You know, it's very open. You can get involved. You don't have to. But if you do have a moment, it would be really appreciated if you did enjoy the content to click that like button below as it really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for your love, time and support. It means the absolute world to me and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.